here today to present a brief perspective on growing knowledge economies. The perspective uh, that I wish to share today is as the Chief Minister of the Australian Capital Territory, a city-state of 330,000 people, uh, which constitutes 2% of the Australian population. And I'm guessing that it's quite a different experience and background than that which many of you bring to this forum. You may know a lot or a little about Australia. You may have heard of uh, the outback, of our mining, uh, of our agriculture and indeed of our cricket. As a small digression, after the 27th over in the one day international against England, Australia is one for 150. <laughs> and while these images are still relevant in the 21st century, they represent just a part of what Australia is all about and what Canberra, my home, is all about. Canberra is a city purpose built as a national capital for Australia and it's not yet a century old. It's officially Australia's most knowledge intensive city. On most of the standard knowledge economy measures, we top the ratings nationally and are towards the top in international ratings. It sounds boastful, but 5% of our gross state product is attributed to R&D. We have 25 qualified ICT professionals per 1,000 of the workforce and employment in the sector is growing at 8% a year. In 2006, 80% of all Canberra households had a home computer and 55% of all homes are connected to broadband. 25% of our population has a bachelor's degree and a further 11% have higher education qualifications. Our school retention rate is the highest in Australia and almost the world. 90% of all of our children complete secondary schooling and a third of our children proceed directly to university. Other qualitative measures of school level literacy, numeracy and science skills place, Australia, place Canberra among the high achievers of the world like Singapore, Switzerland. In relative terms, more small and micro businesses are created in Canberra each year than anywhere in Australia. 99% of our business export are knowledge based products. Our research institutions are world renowned and attract academics from across the globe. Our, core, our community is constituted by 26% of people who were born overseas and I could go on. Indeed, when the term knowledge worker was coined in the late 1960s, most of Canberra's workforce already fitted the description. That gives Canberra, Canberra and Canberrans a particular view on the topic of knowledge communities and particular experience in relation to how such communities are built and how they're sustained. Any student of history will know that knowledge-based communities have been with us for a long time long before microchips and fibre optics. Human activity has always been knowledge-based. Human progress has always depended on the sharing of knowledge and the generation of new knowledge. What we're witnessing now in the 21st century is an acceleration in the dispersion of knowledge thanks to technology. We're creating more information and its transmission is becoming vastly more efficient. But information, of course, is just a commodity. The measure of any knowledge community is not how deep its pool of knowledge is, but how it drinks from that pool, how it dissects, reflects, organises and shares the knowledge, and how indeed it uses the knowledge. It's no coincidence that communities we regard as the leading knowledge economies are also, also those that place great store on fostering education at all levels, that exhibit an understanding of the value of research and that support and foster innovation and entrepreneurialism through information sharing. These are the fundamentals of any knowledge economy and it's the concept of innovation that I'll just briefly touch on now. Innovation is simply the process of applying new ideas to products or business processes. We say innovation has occurred if a change we make gives rise to something new or something with greater value. Innovation doesn't necessarily require science or engineering or ICT for that matter, but it nearly always requires creativity in some form. Innovation might be a technical change to a product, but it can also be managerial or organisational, or a change to marketing or to packaging or to distribution. And what do we know? And what we do know is that firms and institutions that are innovative are superior economic performers and economy builders. We also know that innovation never occurs in isolation. Innovation is the product of a system. It's the result of interplay and the flow of information. The players in the innovation system are the firms, the institution and the people. People with skills and diverse skill sets. But firms are the one that give economic expression to innovation. Innovative firms are strongly influenced by the interaction with inst institutions and other actors in the system. The innovation system within which a firm operates determines its possible innovative responses. 
and all innovation systems are different and reflect the infrastructure, the history and the culture of the area that they occupy. Canberra, of course, has a different innovation system to Sydney and Mumbai has a different innovation system to Bangalore. By, being vir by virtue of being Australia's national capital, Canberra has built up an incredible and quite distinct innovation system. While some of this has been organic, some of it is located in Canberra, of course, by design and by the fact that we are the national capital and the home of the national government. We are home to Australia's leading university, the Australian National University, the only university in Australia, indeed in the Southern Hemisphere, which ranks in the top 20 universities in the world. We also have three other universities. The Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, or CSIRO, is headquartered in Canberra and spends around a billion dollars a year in research support to, to Australian industry. As I said earlier, Canberra has more people in the workforce with tertiary qualifications and higher qualifications, such as PhDs, than any place in Australia. We have proportionately more people working in the creative industries. 12% of Australia's total R&D public spend is spent in Canberra, despite the fact we have 1% of the population. We're home to Australia's National ICT Centre of Excellence, an organisation uh, that will, in the next five years, spend $500 million on pure ICT research. We are the centre of Australia's biotechnology research industry. Over a third of Australia's space sciences capability is located in Canberra. All of Australia's defence technology organisations are located in Canberra, and the Department of Defence administers a $20 billion almost annual budget from Canberra, about 20% of which it spends in Canberra. On top of this, we're home to many of Australia's national institutions and information repositories.